QuickBooks SyncPay plugin provides support for synchronization and payment processing from directly within QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Premier, and QuickBooks Enterprise versions 2007 and up. Merchants can pay invoices, generate sales receipts, and synchronize transaction data without ever leaving QuickBooks. To get started, the plugin can be available from within the Merchant Control Panel. From the home screen, the merchant will click on QuickBooks and then click on the download for the QuickBooks SyncPay. Let's get started. When you start the install, you'll receive the license agreement where you will agree. Choose the install location, typical to allow it to install wherever it is trying to default. It'll let you know that QuickBooks is still running, so even if you have closed QuickBooks, you will still get this notice, but don't be alarmed. QuickBooks does have some files that always run in the background, even when it's closed. You'll just want to select Yes here to continue. It'll let you know that it has been installed and that it will relaunch QuickBooks. At this time when you are relaunching QuickBooks, it's important to log in as the QuickBooks admin user. This is just for the install. Any user can use the plugin once it's been installed, but the install has to be done as the admin user. Once it's reopened, you'll get the No Certificate page. You want to select Yes, Always Allow Access, even if QuickBooks is not running. You may or may not have in this blank area here a drop down to select a user. If you do, you must select Admin. And then also check Allow the Application to Access Personal Data and Continue. Next will be the screen about the digital certificate. You select Yes. It'll let you know that uh, it has been confirmed. Select Done. Almost complete, QuickBooks will shut down. Quick, when QuickBooks does shut down, you can then log in as any user. So the last step in the installation process is to configure the plugin. So we're gonna do that by going to Customers. Now you should have Payment Gateway Plugin as an option. We'll select Configuration. Here's where you'll put in your gateway username and your gateway password, and this communicates then to the gateway. You can also select these three options here. There's another tab that is Receipts and Signatures. You can select a signature if you're using a supported um, signature pin pad, but um, printed receipts are most popular, and you can select which printer you'd like to print your receipts to. You go ahead, back to General, you have everything entered, and click Update. Update complete, you say OK. So that is it for the install. So at this point, it's just a matter of using the plugin. So let's go ahead and use the plugin. So we're going to make a payment against an invoice. So we'll go to Customers, back down to the plugin, select Process Sale. Now the plugin will open. So this is the Payment Gateway plugin. This is what we have just installed. There's a couple options up here, which we'll address in a minute. We're going to start by selecting your customer. We have Anna Smith, who we will use for these demo purposes. So when we select Anna, we see that she has many invoices open. And we have a couple options here. Apply to a specific invoice. If we select that, that allows us to pick which invoices we'd like to pay. You can skip over, etc. Or you can select Apply to a Customer's Open Invoices. That will select them all. You can either pay the full amount or you could do an underpayment. So if you have a customer who has 10 open invoices for $1,000 total and calls and says, I just want to put $500 towards my invoices, you can do that and it'll apply the payment towards the oldest one first, leaving the balance on the newer invoices. But for this demo, we're going to go ahead and do Apply to a Specific Invoice. We're just going to select the first one. We could also take an underpayment here if we chose. We can, we can do an underpayment but not an overpayment. We're just going to go ahead and leave it as it is and take a payment for the full $56.50. Select your card type. We're going to put in a card number. The red asterisks are the required fields. And also if you did have a supported card reader and you wanted to swipe it, this is the point where you would swipe that too. Over here on this screen is where we can see the billing address and the shipping address. This is going to pull right from your customer file within QuickBooks. Now there's a couple fields down here before we actually process the card. We'll chat about this a bit. The first one is update existing QuickBooks customer. If you select this, this is simply for convenience. So if you have a customer that calls and says, hey, I have a new address. I'm no longer at 123 Main Street. I'm now at 456 Main Street. You can make that change right here. 
check this box off and when you process the payment it'll send the payment to the gateway but it'll also come back and update the address within your quickbooks so it's just basically for convenience purposes we're going to go ahead and put it back as it was this second one though, uh, this is about the customer vault. So if you chose to sign up for the customer vault, which is an added feature within the gateway, um, you can do so. And if you were going to do that, you would check this box to save this information to the vault. Now as a side note, the plugin cannot reach into your QuickBooks to pull out sensitive payment info. So we can pull address, name, etc., but not the credit card data. It's not compliant for us to do so. Um, so if you wanted the gateway to access that information, you would store it on the vault within the gateway. You would sign up for that service. So if you did sign up for that service, you would check this box here. And at the time the payment is made, it'll add this customer to the vault, come back, record that it already has the information at the same time that it processes the payment. So it's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and do that for this payment here. We're going to add Anna to the vault at the same time that we process the 5650. So now we're just going to go ahead and do process and close. Okay, and then we get the screen. It tells us that it was approved and we know that she was added to the vault. We got a customer vault ID. Here's where we can pick how many receipts we wanted to print if we'd like. Click print receipt. We're just gonna go ahead and say okay in this case. And now what's going to come up is a QuickBooks receipt payment screen. This is just simply to eyeball, to see that this invoice was paid for this amount. We can see there's a zero balance due. So save and close, no action needs to be taken. So now for what is kind of interesting, since we added her to the vault, if we were to go and process another sale, again for Anna, now we get this red text letting us know that we've previously billed them, that we saved their information, and here's the last four. So it's able to talk to the gateway to know that that happened. So we can check off whichever invoices we wanted to pay, we would just hit process and close and off it goes. If we don't want to use this card, you can always uncheck it, enter in new information as a one time or enter new information and check this box to update the file within QuickBooks. The only time you need to check this box off here is if you're going to either add new information or update it. But once you're already in the vault, you don't need to continue to check this off if you're using the info on file. So we're going to go ahead and use the info on file. We're going to pay those couple invoices there, hit process and close. Okay, and those were approved. Vault ID it was used. We're just going to say okay. Same screen should pop up. There we go with those two invoices. We're going to do save and close. Now if we were to go to Anna Smith and we were to take a look at one of those invoices, we'll see it marked as paid. So that is payment of an invoice. The other way to use the plugin is to pay a sales receipt. So let's go ahead and start that. We're going to create a sales receipt. We're going to go ahead and use Anna Smith again. Select our item, put in the quantity, put in whatever line items you want. You can have multiple line items, of course. So we have quantity of 14. We're going to do save and close. Now this box here, you want to make sure that this is not checked. This is proprietary to QuickBooks, so it would process through Intuit if you're already using that. So make sure this box is not checked so that it will launch the plugin instead. So we're going to say save and close. And we'll see that the plugin is going to try to pop up. It tells us our sales receipt was created. Would we like to process? Yes, you want to select process. If you don't select process, this is your only opportunity to pay that sales receipt, so you won't have another chance. So now that it is a sales receipt, you don't have the option to change the customer. It does have to be paid in full, so there's no option here to change those. It lets us use the payment info on file if we'd like. Of course, we can enter in a different card. We're going to go ahead and pay the 1428. We will select process and close. So it'll pay that payment. It should pop up here. Tell us that it was approved. Again, we get the trans ID. Print receipts, it's all the same. We'll say OK. And now the sales receipt pops up. And we can see down here in the memo field, we do have the transaction ID. So we know that was paid. 
we will just do save and close, no action to take. So that is it as far as processing of payments using invoices and sales receipts. So to continue on, next we're going to talk about the synchronization piece of the plugin. So to reiterate, the plugin has a couple different legs to it. Um, it has the payment portion that we just saw, the invoicing and paying sales receipts. It also has a synchronization piece, which allows you to pull transactions from the gateway over into QuickBooks. Um, the sync is found also under the plugin and you would select Gateway Sync. Now, if you did run some transactions through the plugin, but you also have another source, let's say you're using mobile payments, or you have a website set up and some transactions are coming in from your website. So if you have a couple different sources, this allows you to pull all those other transactions into your QuickBooks. You can apply them to customers, you can apply them to invoices, um, and it is smart enough to not duplicate anything that you've maybe already ran through the plugin. So just to back up, the plugin can be used for payments of sales receipts and invoices. You can do that alone, or you can also run the synchronization. You could do that alone, or you can do both pieces together. So let's just take a look here at the sync. So when we open up the sync, it's going to tell you the last date that you last ran this. We're going to go ahead this time, though, and we're going to run anything that's settled. And again, it's only settled transactions since March 10th. We allow you to choose your bank account. This is going to be any of the bank accounts that you have listed in your QuickBooks. We're just going to use the deposit account. We'll start by clicking on download transactions. And again, this will only pull over settled transactions. So the first thing it does is starts to prepare by pulling your customer file. Then it reaches out to the gateway and pulls over any of your transactions. So we see we do have two batches here. You can open up this one also. So we have it set off to automatically require a customer for a sales receipt. We can also ask it to automatically match transactions to QuickBooks customers. And what this does is if we check this off, it's going to look for any information that came over with the sale, um, such as name, address, phone number, email, anything that may have came from the gateway. It tries to match it up to somebody in your QuickBooks. And you see that Anna Smith was already matched up, Elmer Fudd, Elmer Fudd, these were matched up previously. So if we go ahead and check this box, it's going to look again. Okay, so we found several. These all had a match. This one did not. So let's go ahead and take a look. If you don't have a customer match, you can click on Choose Customer. We can see here it shows us that it's William Bell. And apparently William Bell doesn't exist here within our QuickBooks. So we can go ahead and add him. We're going to add William Bell and say OK. So now he's added. This piece here is important, import type. Do we want to create sales receipts or do we want to receive payments on invoices? Most common is to receive payments on invoices and set it as the default. When we do this, it asks us to confirm that that's what we want to do. Receive it on an invoice, use it for all transactions. If you select that for one customer and choose it as the default, it'll apply it to all your customers in the background. So now what the plugin will do is look for an invoice for each of these customers. If it doesn't see it, it will apply it um, as a credit to that customer. So now that we have a person, a customer, for each of these, we're going to go ahead and click Import Transactions and Record Deposits. Just a side note, you'll see we're on the second step. The next step would be voids and returns. You can also record and pull over any voids and returns from the gateway, or if you're using ACH and if you have late returns too. We didn't pull any voids or returns. These are, are all sales, so this will skip this piece, but I just wanted to point it out while we're looking at this screen that that is a possibility too. It's one of the functions of the plugin. So import transactions and record deposits. Let's go ahead and move forward with that going to start to mark those off, start to record them. It's getting ready to record each of them. And depending how many you have, this may take a few minutes. This here shouldn't take very long at all. 
And there we go. Five transactions entered into QuickBooks. Two batch deposits were recorded. We'll say OK. The gateway sync is complete. So we'll say close to that. Now, if we had already synced some of those transactions, um, the first couple looked like they had already been synced before, so it won't duplicate, which is really nice. So it'll recognize if it already did run a sync. If you have to pull your date back a little bit because you have something that's said later, it will not duplicate the recordings. So now if you were to go into your chart of accounts and look at that deposit, you would also see those in there. So that wraps it up for the synchronization portion of QuickBooks and the functionality of the entire QuickBooks plugin.